Okay, so welcome to the first of a series of videos, tutorials on how to use the OpenTrans OT2 robot, the uh, pipetting robot. Um, so this is chapter zero, the introduction. Um, I'm going to go over some hardware, going to get a little bit into how the software works, uh, getting, thing, everything, uh, getting everything set up, ready to go. Um, and then, yeah, so... Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. Uh, of course, it doesn't want to work. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, this is a beginner level video. You don't need anything uh, coming into this. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to know anything about the robot, how it works, stuff like that. We're going to go as, uh, as if you don't know anything at all going right into this. So first things first. Um, we need to figure out, so what is the uh, OT2? So the OT2, it's a pipetting robot. And so you can see here in this video, it, um, it moves liquids from one location to another. Pretty simple. It does all your pipetting for you, hence pipetting robot. Um, so all your repetitive repetting, uh, pipetting is no longer a thing because you can have this thing do it. So let's get into the hardware here so I have a picture here excuse the uh, the clutter but uh, this is Ada uh, our uh, OT2 and as you can see here um, it has a bunch of stuff inside of it there's a big box hanging on top of it there's tubes or not tube, yeah tubes and vials and pet tips and um, just going to go through and figure out what everything is. So we're going to start out here with the, uh, the pipette carriage, which is this big box here. This is where everything happens. This is, it's the pipette carriage. It holds the pipettes. So if we um, look underneath here, you can see there's two um, things that stick down. Uh, those are the two pipettes. Um, this one here is a uh, 30 to 300 megaliter pipette. Um, which means you can suck up liquids from 30 microliters to 300 microliters. Um, anything less than that, it's not rated for. Anything more than that, it's not rated for. I don't even think it will go um, higher than 300. I haven't tried going lower than 30, though. Keep that in mind. Um, the one next to it here is a 1 to 10 microliter pipette, and so they complement each other really nicely, so you can with the larger um, 300 microliter pipette, um, you can have it move a whole bunch, all your a uh, lot of liquid right away, and then the um, one to ten microliter pipette will um, top it off whatever your volume whatever volume you're aiming for. So that's my pet carriage. We're gonna move on here to the uh, the trash bin. So that's this thing right here in the corner. And so this is where all your used pipette tips go. This is where um, any liquid that's left in the pipe, uh, pipette tips ends up. Um, so it is a hazardous waste bin. Um, it, it is made out of plastic. Um, I don't know if it's chemical resistant or not. Um, I don't know. I haven't tried it because um, I don't want to break my... Uh, <laughs> break my... Uh, trash bin or yeah um, so but this black piece here lifts off and you'll see there's a series of switches here and these switches are what the um, are what the robot uses to calibrate the uh, pipette tips so when you when the pipettes have a tip on them it'll go and it'll hit all five of the switches so there's one in the middle here and then there's one here one here on all four sides and so by doing that um, it knows exactly where the uh, pipette tip is, where the end of the pipette tip is. So this is the stuff that's built in to the uh, OT2. This is all the stuff that you come with. Um, but what you have next is um, you can have what's called labware, and that's all the stuff that goes in these slots here. So there's 11 slots. Um, they're the standard uh, size for biology stuff, um, well plates, um, stuff like that. Um, 
we uh, take a look here, these are uh, pipette tips. Um, this one here uh, in slot 10, you get um, 96 300 microliter pipette tips. So that's for the 30 to 300 microliter pipette. And next to it in slot 11 here is, again, another 96 of the uh, 10 microliter pipette tips for the, um, for the 1 to 10 microliter pipette. Self-explanatory. Down here, there are um, six holes, slots. It's a tube rack for the 50 milliliter um, uh, tubes um, that you can get. So here's some here. Next to that is a 3D printed um, vial holder for the 20 milliliter uh, scintillation vials that we have. Um, you can do this because, like the sizing, like I said earlier, the sizing is standard. And what you can do even is you can program in your own labware. You don't have to buy the OpenTron stuff, and the OpenTron stuff isn't going to cover everything. So this here is OpenTron's. We 3D printed this here, and this here is actually a um, a vial holder uh, from Agilent. And so. This 3D printed one, you just 3D print it with the uh, specifications, and then you measure the dimensions, what the actual dimensions are, and you program that into the robot. Um, and we'll go through that in a future video. Um, here's another close up. It's 3D printed, it holds the 20 milliliter scintillation vials. Here is the 54 um, vial slot, uh, 2 milliliter vial holder from Agilent. And it holds the um, the vials. So if you're doing HPLC or just LC in general, and you're using a um, an auto sampler or a multi sampler, you can take those uh, vial holders and slot it right into the uh, into the OT2, and you can do serial dilutions. You can do all your stuff, and it's super accurate, and it's really really nice. So that was labware. Now the difference between labware and modules is that you have all this extra space here that you can fill up with more labware but this is all labware is what i would consider um dumb um yeah dumb equipment versus modules is what i would consider smart equipment and so this here is a temperature module and so this has its own power supply um, that you plug in and then it communicates to the robot via usb and so you can actually set the temperature of this thing. I believe it's four degrees Celsius all the way up to 90, 96, maybe 100. Um, no, 98, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can set the temperature here. And so it's smart in that it communicates with the robot and it you can program it. Um, and so you can put like a PQR um, strips on here there's a well plate for it um, there's also a two and a half milliliter um, aluminum block so you can keep all your temperature sensitive stuff from spoiling just by simply holding it at temperature so this is pretty much um, this isn't all of the hardware that's out there like I, get, I said you can 3d print stuff as well and so it could go as far as saying there's infinitely many possibilities um, but as far as the OpenTron stuff we just have this there's also a um, a, uh, a holder like this where it has four slots for the 50 mil uh, 50 milliliter uh, tubes but also has I think it's four slots for 15 milliliter tubes um, so there's that you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this thing it's really really nice so that's on a hardware side. So how do we get the um, how do we get the robot to talk to the hardware? How do how does the robot know what the hardware is? So we're gonna get into the uh, software a little bit here. And so we need to initialize it pretty much. When you without initializing it, or when you first initialize it, I guess um, the robot doesn't know where anything is. Okay, it doesn't have any sensors here. This deck here is, um, like I said, it's dumb equipment. The only thing here that's electronic is the uh, calibration switches up here. And so there's no sensors, there's no IR uh, reader to tell it which 
labware or which module is in which slot, blah, 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 blah. So what you need to do is you need to set it up yourself. And you need to tell it which version of software you use, blah, 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 blah. And so um, to expedite this process, I created a um, Python file, sim uh, simply, which we'll look in at in a future video. Um, but basically, it's just a simple initialize the OT2. And so there's two Python files. So this one here is um, it simulates it for double checking math, verifying the code, so on and so forth. And so what it'll do is it'll read the uh, contents of the uh, file and then it'll execute it as if it, you had it typed out on its own. And so you, instead of having 50 lines of init initialization stuff, you just put that in its own little file and then you call it with one line of code. It's really nice. Um, we'll look at what's inside of this file again, like I said, in a future video. Um, so that's simulations, or when you're down here, there's another one where it's um, just initialize ot2.py, and this is for actually executing the commands on the robot, making it move, and having it actually start doing uh, pipetting. So when you run this code, all of a sudden now it knows that, okay, there are two uh, uh, pipette tip holders here, and it knows uh, what the volumes are for the uh, pipette tips, and it knows what pipette goes with which uh, pipette tips um, slot, I guess. And so that's all nice and dandy, but what about the other stuff? So those are what um, are called plates. And so, yes, each of these little slots here, I guess you could think of it as a plate. And so a plate of food, it holds food versus here a plate is the holder and it holds your liquids. Um, it's a good analogy. And so we need to define these plates, the plates that are gonna hold our food, gonna hold our liquids. And so we do this with um, a line of code. And so um, here we have just a name that we're gonna use when we, whenever we need to call that uh, plate. And don't worry if you don't understand it. We'll go through this in detail um, in the next video, actually. Um, so, but you need to define a name for the uh, for the plate that you're going to use later. Uh, it has to be a unique name. Then here, you give you simply give it the programming name of the labware, and um, they're all listed on the OpenTrons website. If you have, uh, if you buy the OpenTrons uh, stuff. And then you simply tell it uh, which position on the deck it's in. So we're saying, hey, there's the uh, six um, six slot slick, uh, six location 50 mil uh, tube rack, right? And so if we run this line of code, the robot actually knows that hey, there's this uh, piece of labware here now. And so this is, like you can see down here, it says OpenTrons on it. Um, and so this is the OpenTrons labware. They have, um, this all comes default with the, um, it's all built into the software already to go into the API. So, but what if you 3D print your own stuff or what if you wanna add an Agilent thing to this and it's not an OpenTrons thing? So what you have to do is you have to define um, custom plates. And so it's the same. Uh, procedure, you give it a name, a unique name that you're going to use later, and you tell it what positions it's in in the deck. The only difference here is that you're defining it from a definition, and what you do is you um, you go to the OpenTrans website, and there's a tab, I believe, that says Labware Designer or something, where you give it all the dimensions of what you're trying to add, and it'll give you a file, a JSON file, which you'll then um, upload to the robot uh, through Jupyter and don't worry we'll go through this later and you just simply say what the um, the file name is and so here we call the uh, the 3d printed thing the brow tech um, eight slot eight location well plate and it holds 20,000 microliters or 20 milliliters and so when we run this line of code easy peasy now it knows this 3d printed thing is here and we'll do the same thing for the Agilent. It's just a different name because it's a different file. 
and again here this name that we want to use later it has to be unique otherwise you'll override it you get into a whole bunch of fun stuff but we'll get into that later we're saying it's in position three now um, it's the Agilent uh, 54 location well plate and it holds two microliters or two uh, two milliliters two thousand microliters and so now it knows basically where all of the lab wire is and so when you're writing the code you it you don't need to tell it the exact positioning where to go you just say hey go to this position or this location on this plate and it'll just go there and it's really really nice and it's simple really well designed and so we're almost ready to go here so uh, we need to prepare to move so final checks uh, imagine you have your tubes in here and your scintillation vials and then your um, sample vials down here all ready to go and you have a full uh, kit of pipette tips and you're ready to go there's one thing that you have to make absolutely sure of um, before you start moving the robot and that's you need to remove any lids or caps on labware or tubes or vials or whatever because you will there's no sensor on the pipettes to know if it's hitting something so as far as it's concerned there's it's not hitting anything so it'll go straight through a, um, a, a lid or and like shatter the pipette tip or damage the pipette tip bend it and I actually have um, in case you're curious there's a couple demonstration videos that I have here and so when um, when you're ready to go make sure everything's uncovered you're ready to go you're ready to start programming the robot so that's where we're gonna leave off for now so next video again it's gonna be basic programming um, we're gonna start moving the robot um, yeah it's gonna be lots of fun again uh, next video will be a beginner video too you don't need to know how to program Python so the, the OT2 is coded um, or is written in uh, to use Python and um, through the uh, Jupyter Notebook and don't worry we'll go through how to access it and everything um, but you don't need to know how to program for the next video we'll teach you everything you need to know to get this thing up and running and yeah so we'll see you then